Furthermore, you look at the Australia example that she put out there. In Australia, the same thing happened there, too. They decided inevitably that they were going to ban the handguns, or not ban handguns, but ban semi-automatic rifles after a mass shooting happened there. But not only that, they instituted a mandatory buyback program. Now, the operative word in that is mandatory, meaning you don't have a choice. Basically, it was compensated confiscation. They compensated you for basically taking your firearm. Now, think about that for a second. If I put a gun to somebody's head and said, I want you to sell me your watch for 50% 50 below the value of the watch, and I said, if you don't, I'm going to shoot you, would you consider that a watch buyback, or would you call that a robbery? It's the same thing here. Just because they're paying me money to give my guns back, if I'm forced to do it, and if I don't do it, I'm going to be charged with a crime? That's, That's not a buyback program. That is a confiscation. The thing that bothers me even further is how a site like PolitiFact responded to it. Because what they went, they went on this kind of witch hunt about how the NRA took her words out of context or stretched her words so much that they weren't even recognizable and that she didn't really say that she was supporting a confiscation, that she was just saying that maybe we should look to them in utilizing the same type of community buyback programs that we do on a state local level, which is interesting because at the end of her speech, she says, yes, I do think we should look to Australia as an example of what we should do on a national level. Now, here's the question I have to ask. If we are talking about a situation where you want to utilize something as an example to do on a national level, and you already know that, on a, and you already are aware that, we're, that some states have buyback programs, but then you say you want to use Australia's model as part of that buyback program, and as an example of that buyback program on a national level, I'm trying to understand why you would even make the distinction, considering that the difference between a state-level buyback program and the buyback program in Australia was the one in Australia was mandatory. And the problem that drove, and the thing that drove me wild was that in PolitiFact, they went on and on and on about how that's not what she meant, that she wasn't talking about a confiscation, that she was merely just talking about the buyback programs, and that that's what she was referring to when she was talking about the U.S. community, level, uh, US community uh, state-level buyback programs. But you wouldn't make the comparison. You already have an example. So why are we even talking about Australia unless you completely understood what you were talking about? You knew, Hillary Clinton knew exactly what she was referring to. That's why she brought up Australia. That's why she brought up Canada. That's why she brought up the UK. One of the things that I learned from my legal mentor when I was in law school doing a mock trial program and he was teaching us how to cross-examine someone is the idea and the notion that when somebody doesn't know why they're asking you, when someone doesn't know why you're asking them a question or what you're trying to get as a result of the answer to that question, they usually resort to telling you the truth because they can't think or figure out the angle in which they want to use to lie to you. I, fi I feel like that's what happened here. The guy asked her a question about banning guns, essentially. He said, why can't we do what they did in Australia when they got rid of all the guns in less than a year? And she has constantly stood on this pedestal and said that she is for the Second Amendment. She respects the Second Amendment. But when somebody in an audience blatantly comes and asks her why we can't essentially do away with the Second Amendment and ban guns and get rid of them, she doesn't correct them. She doesn't say, well, no, I respect the Second Amendment, so I'm not trying to get rid of guns or take guns away from the people. I just want to implement these measures. And ironically enough, the same measures that she keeps calling common sense are all precursor measures that every each one of these countries um, uh, enacted before they decided to confiscate their firearms, however decided to do it. So to me, when I look at something like when I look at a site like PolitiFact and I see them caping essentially for a statement that Hillary Clinton said that was so blatantly in favor of a confiscation, it, it causes me to question them because I've used PolitiFacts many a times to verify certain aspects of stats and things of that nature um, because there's a kind of perceived notion that they're, they're objective and they're unbiased. But I have to, but it, this kind of, kind of called into question a lot of things, but also reminded me of something. When we're dealing with things on the internet, we've got to remember that just because on the face they say, oh, we're, we're unbiased, we're objective, we're all of these, these great things, and you can depend on them, because I know a lot of people who, def who depend on sites like PolitiFacts to, um, to confirm their stats, confirm their stances on certain aspects of things, um, and do so from, a, from an objective manner. I, I, I don't think I can really trust PolitiFact anymore, because I'm looking at this, and everything that they're doing is skewed in favor of Hillary Clinton. Nothing about this is objective.